Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. I got up early today and before working all day I thought, what better way to start the day than talking about underwater photography? I wish I was underwater. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. But first, one more swig of coffee. Okay, we've talked about backgrounds. We had an earlier episode on get low, shoot up to get an open water or non-distracting background. In our previous video, we talked about finding a pretty or colorful or appealing background to highlight our subject. But sometimes we might find a cool subject, but no matter what we do, the background is hideous. Well, we do have ways of dealing with a distracting or ugly background. And that's what we're going to talk about in this tutorial. Basically, we can open our aperture and blur the background. We can make our aperture very small and have a quick shutter speed and sometimes render the background real dark or black. We can position our strobe and aim it at the camera such that the edge of the cone of light highlights our subject but does not highlight that blurred or ugly, that ugly background. Or sometimes we can just throw our hands up and if, if the subject allows, we can get very close and fill the frame with our subject. Uh, obviously a little different composition, but we're virtually eliminating the background. So let's check out some examples and thanks for tuning in. What do we do when we cannot get low and shoot up to attain a blue water or non-distracting background? Or we cannot find a subject with a very pretty or interesting or good background. What do we do then? Well, we have a few techniques. Here's a blenny, and even though I was low and shooting up, the background was still ugly or distracting. Well, one thing we can do is open our aperture. Now, when we do that, we have a very, very narrow plane of focus, very limited depth of field. So sometimes it's hard to get the subject in focus, but that effectively really blurs the distracting background and makes it less visible. This is the same subject with a wide open aperture. You can still see there's still a little blur from some of the coral in the foreground. It might not be the very best picture, but it sure has a much less distracting background because I've eliminated it by blurring it so much by opening my aperture. Uh, similarly, this was a very distracting background. I focused right on the subject's eyes and blurred everything except for its eyes and the background is not as distracting. The greenish color is even a little bit appealing. Now, this is uh, aperture 5.6, a wide open aperture for macro. I have an extremely limited plane of focus and I just focused on the eye and unfortunately the rest of the gobi is blurred. Uh, if I had a smaller aperture though, the background would have been very distracting. Although it's a matter of taste, what do you want to have? More of the fish in focus or, or do you want to have the distracting background? So here's a squirrel fish with sort of a distracting background. Similar subject, I really opened up my aperture to f5.6, focused on its eyes, and I got a good portion of the face in focus. And now that distracting background is virtually eliminated. It's blurred and it's rendered sort of a nice pretty green non-distracting color and the image kind of pops out at us even though the, dis the background was distracting. I've eliminated it by opening up the aperture. Now we can get carried away. Here's a picture <coughs> of a flamingo tongue on a coral uh, with a f. The aperture was like f22. You can see the distracting background. I thought I'd be smart and open up my aperture and I focused right at the tip of the flamingo tongue and now the background is very pretty and non-distracting but unfortunately only a very small portion of the tip of the flamingo tongue is in, in focus and most of it's blurred. I don't think this image quite works. However, if you have the most of the subject parallel to the plane of the sensor, you can still have an open aperture with macro as we do here. And I've got this flamingo tongue in focus and even most of the um, coral that it's on is in focus. And the background is very non-distracting because the depth of field is so small. Um, now another thing we can do is just get very close to the subject. Okay, this background is a distracting background. It's on a sandy seafloor. But if we get close to the subject, remember with macro we have very little depth of field and if the distracting background, in this case the sandy seafloor, is far enough behind it, it'll become blurred enough that the background is less distracting. Even though it's not an open water or black background, it's blurred enough that it's less distracting. Now here we see a shrimp on top of this purple, uh, like a coral coming out of the sand. Kind of distracting because I'm too far away from the shrimp and every, you know, not the background isn't blurred enough. But if I get closer to the shrimp, I'm still not shooting, not down and shooting up. I still have the sandy seafloor behind me, 
but now it is so blurred. The depth of field is relatively narrow. I'm very close to the shrimp. I'm focused right on the shrimp. And the distracting background is so blurred, it now is non-distracting. Here's an octopus on a sandy seafloor. I couldn't get low enough into the sand to eliminate the distracting background, but I got closer and closer to the face of the octopus. And even though now the background is sandy and distracting, it's so blurred that the octopus kind of pops out at me more. So I'm getting closer to the subject, focusing right on the subject, and with my quite limited depth of field, I'm rendering the background quite blurred, even though I don't have a real open aperture. Again, here's a mantis shrimp, distracting background. So I get closer to the shrimp, and I'm not really down and shooting up. I still have a distracting background, but I'm focused more on the face and the eyes of the shrimp, and the background is more blurred so that the subject, the eyes of the shrimp, pops out at me a little bit more, even though this is a relatively smaller um, aperture. Uh, again, I have, I'm focused right on this goby and the background, even though you can see there's a distracting background, it's blurred enough that the colors actually might even add to the image than, it would, than if it was an otherwise blue or black open water background. And not to beat a point home, but here's another picture of a crab on a sandy, distracting background. I got really close, focused right on the crab's face, and now even though the sandy background is still there, it's less distracting, and the crab pops out at me more. Of course, with super macro, we have such narrow, zero depth of field, really, that if you focus on the subject, no matter how bad the background is, if it's even only a tiny bit away as it was here, it's still rendered blurred, and the background is relatively pretty. Now, another thing we can do is keep our fast shutter speed, like in this case, one to two hundredths of a second to sync with the camera, but close our aperture very small. Here it was 1 to 32. I mean, not right here, but on the next one. So here we have a distracting background, but I really closed my aperture, and now I've eliminated the background because I've rendered it black. There is that sandy seafloor behind this small cuttlefish. Look at how it's black now because I have such a small aperture. I've pulled my strobes in a little tighter, and I can still illuminate the subject, but I have now the distracting background becomes non-distracting because it's black. And here, uh, that background was distracting, but I really made my um, aperture very, very small to render it dark, almost black. A final thing we can do is we can pull our strobe so that we're aiming our strobe sort of back at the camera, and the cone of light still catches the subject, but the cone of light of the strobe no longer illuminates the background. So even though this background was quite distracting, I'm not really illuminating it with my strobe, so it becomes darker, less visible, and the image kind of pops out. That distracting background is now not as noticeable because of the strobe position. Now when I'm putting my strobe above me and, and pointing it back toward the camera, I am illuminating the water column between my camera and the subject, so this could create some backscatter. Similar situation, a distracting coral background behind this goby. I had my strobe above the camera, aiming it toward the camera, and I just, the cone of light caught the goby and part of the coral, and then the water column between the goby and my camera, but it did not illuminate. The cone of light from the strobe did not illuminate the background behind it, and now the background is not distracting. Finally, the last thing we can do, now this changes our composition of the picture because we're really markedly changing our proximity, but this beautiful frogfish was just, I couldn't get rid, I couldn't get low enough to eliminate the distracting sandy background, so I got right up to it and filled the frame with the subject. And now, we've eliminated the background because there is no background. Now, of course, we have changed our composition. Again, uh, this frogfish, uh, nice, beautiful frogfish, but on this uh, kind of distracting sandy seafloor, I get in real tight, and I fill the frame with just a portion of its face, and voila, no background to be distracting. And a similar idea with this lionfish here. There was a lot of backscatter and a bad background. I got in real tight. You can still see some of the backscatter, but by getting in real tight, you're making the water column smaller, so you're creating less backscatter because there's less water column, and a lot of the backscatter is hidden by the background, which is the subject, and not just open water where the backscatter is more visible. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful of various ways of dealing with a bad background. Okay, mainly we can open our aperture to blur the background. We can make a very, very small aperture and keep a quick shutter speed to render the black background black. We can put our strobes and point them toward the camera and have the cone of light just catch the edge of the subject and not illuminate the distracting background.
or we can just move in real close and fill the frame with our subject, changing the composition, but filling the frame with our subject and eliminating the distracting background. So this is it for the tutorials on the background. The background is so important with regard to composition and underwater photography. And I hope you found this helpful. Please give me any feedback on my website. Thank you very much for your attention.